Hi, welcome back to the Yoga Cafe. Uh, so today we're going to begin seated. You'll need your trusty chair. Um, and then we'll we'll do part of the practice standing. And then towards the end, I would love it if you could lie down. That might mean if you're lying down on the floor that you place a yoga mat or a padding or something to make you comfortable being on your back on the floor. It might also mean that you go to a couch during that time or a bed. Okay. So um, collect whatever you need and then meet me back here and we'll get started. So we're going to begin in a comfortable seated position, whatever that might look like or mean to you. <clears throat> Excuse me. And our opening practice is something that my students have nicknamed the sea otter massage. Here we go. Okay, so this our very first practice is called the sea otter massage. And if you are wearing glasses, you'll want to remove your glasses for this one. So take a moment to get comfortable and then bring your hand, your two hands together and rub them until you get a little bit of heat through your hands. Okay, So you're going to rub your fingers and then it's as if you are very briskly washing your body. Okay, maybe you've had an experience of having to wash in very cold water and just get it over with as quickly as possible. So we're gonna go through different parts of the body and we're going to brush the body uh, gently, but with enough pressure to be able to feel the blood coming to the surface. So we start with the face. So you're gonna gently brush the face three or four times and then go into the scalp, massaging the scalp, and brush down the neck. And then extend one arm, and you're gonna brush down one side of the arm and then brush up the other side of the arm. And you'll do that three or four times, <clears throat> excuse me. And then you'll switch to the other side, brushing up and down the arm. And then take one hand to your chest, one hand to your belly, and rub vigorously. This is where we get the sea otter name because this is what sea otters do. Then lean a little forward, get your back and massage whatever you can of your back, whatever you can reach. Then finish it by brushing down the legs, almost like you're brushing crumbs off your lap. And then pause for a moment and notice any changes in your breathing, your heart rate, you know, any sensation that you notice that might be different. So we're going to do this two more times. Each time will be a little bit faster. Take a breath in. Bring your hands together and rub. Breathe naturally. And here we go. Face, scalp, neck, up and down one arm up and down the other arm, chest and belly, back, legs, and then you pause and just observe. This last time we're going to do this, there is an option for you to hold your breath in during the entire massage. If at any time that makes you feel uncomfortable or agitated, then let go of holding the breath and just breathe normally, okay? So let's begin by bringing the hands together. Take a breath in. Hold if you're gonna hold and brush the face, scalp, neck, one arm, other arm, chest and belly, back, legs, and then exhale. And just pause there for a moment to notice how you feel. OK. 
Okay. Now we're going to move through the joints, warming up the joints. We'll start with the wrists. Go ahead and lace your fingers together and then relax the fingers. So keep it, keep it fairly uh, loose through the fingers. Point your elbows down and just circle the wrists around. Then go the other direction, which may take a little bit because it's the non-dominant hand leading. <laughs> And now extend your arms forward and gently fold at the wrist so that the fingers point somewhat down. And I want you to visualize those party balloons we blow at New Year's Eve. Well, maybe in COVID times, we're gonna skip it, but once we get back to normal, party balloons that you blow and they unroll. So your arms are gonna be like those party horns. I'm going to roll them back up. So roll up the fingers, the wrists, the elbows, and then possibly even point the elbows up towards the ceiling. Take a breath in. Then as you exhale, extend and bend at the wrists again. Inhale, roll up. Exhale, extend. Inhale, roll up. Exhale extend this next time when you inhale and roll up pause and then exhale point your elbows out back and down inhale the elbows come forward towards each other and up and continue circling the elbows to the rhythm of your breath Now, ideally, you circle these elbows long enough and you notice a change, something that shifts in the feeling of your shoulders. Maybe it's less creaking and cracking or less pain. Maybe it's subtler than that. Maybe it's just a feeling of, ah. <sighs> Like you've dropped the weight of the world. The next time your elbows point down, let's reverse direction. So the elbows go back, up, forward, and down. So you're really just finding your natural range of motion. And we'll do this one more time. <sighs> and then release the arms. Okay, notice how that feels through the upper body. So now we'll do our standing work because standing work is really good for strengthening the core of the body, working towards balance and also helping to uh, stabilize energy, harmonize energy. So take a moment to come up to standing. I'm going to shift my view a little bit there. And we'll begin with some ankle circles. So if balance is a little tricky, you're welcome to hold on to your chair or the wall. And I want you to just stand on one foot and circle the other ankle around slowly, spreading your toes if you can. And then let's go the opposite direction. And then release, and we'll try the other side. So standing on one foot, either holding on to something or not, 
or playing with balance, start to slowly circle your ankle, finding your range of motion. It's the same practice as when we were circling the shoulders. Find your range of motion. Now let's reverse direction. Good, okay. And we'll step the feet right next to each other as close as you can comfortably get. If the structure of your knees requires your feet to be a little bit apart so that you can have the legs right up against each other, then of course you're going to adjust your stance. All right, go ahead and bend your knees, hands on your thighs. And we're gonna circle the knees around without lifting the toes or the heels. So the feet stay flat. Feet stay flat as you circle the knees around. These don't have to be huge circles. You can start very small and then eventually work your way up to deeper knee bends, depending on the health of your knees today. Last one this direction, then we reverse. And again, just like with the shoulders and the ankles, you're finding the range of motion that is appropriate for you today. Let's go one more time and then come up to stand. We're gonna bring the hands to the hips, separate the feet a little wider than your shoulders. Keep the knees slightly bent and then swing the hips as far as they'll go to one side and then behind you. And then as far as they'll go to the other side and then as far as you can comfortably go forward. Okay, so there's your range of motion. That's your maximum edge. And then once you've gone around again, kind of describing that maximum edge, then back off a little bit. So about 70% of your maximum edge. And you might hear some creaks and cracks as you go around in your circle. You might even hear my creaks and cracks. My hips tend to be very talkative. One more time this direction. Once we're folded forward again, let's reverse. So now we find our maximum edge, once again, going this direction. And then when you're done experiencing that a couple times, go ahead and back off and find your 70% of that maximum edge. It's always good to understand where the edge is in your body, which it will shift depending on the time of day, depending on your level of activity. There's hormone changes, there's food, uh, you know, dietary changes that affect our range of motion as well. So really good to just understand that these things are impermanent, <laughs> as the Buddhists say. All right, go ahead and come back up to center. And then we're going to separate the feet even wider. Is that right? Yes, even wider. And I recommend turning your toes slightly out like a ballerina, not, not quite all the way out, but just a little bit out. And then bending the knees. Now hands are gonna stay on the hips with the idea that you are not gonna move from the hips down very much. So it's as if you've been buried in the sand up to your hips. And the only thing that gets to move is the torso. At any time, if you need to take a break, straighten the legs, shake something out, please do so. All right, let's start with a breath in. Then as you exhale, lean your shoulder towards the same side knee and fold forward. 
and then towards the other side and come up to center. Pause, reverse direction. Lean your shoulder as you exhale towards the knee and fold, then inhale to the other knee and come up to center. That's it, that's the movement with the breath, exhaling, exhaling, and then inhaling and inhaling, and then you reverse. Every time you come up to center, you reverse and go the other way. Now, I mentioned before that the hips tend to crack and pop and make noise. You might still hear the hips making noise while doing this movement. But what I'm hoping you're experiencing is some information about how the hips and the back connect. And you might notice one side is a bit more um, sensational than the other side. Okay, last time around. So the next time you get back up to center, I want you to pause. And then if you haven't already, go ahead and straighten your legs. Heel toe the feet in right underneath your hip joints. And let's just shake out the legs a little bit. Shake out the hips a little bit if you need to. Shoulders. All right. We're gonna come into what we call the Wuji stance. We did this last week. I'm gonna show you from the side. So feet are about shoulder width apart. Rock your weight back towards your heels and unlock your knees. And then take a slight tuck to your pelvis. At the same time, the back of your skull reaches up so that there's space between your head and your hips. And then just notice, as you're standing here, just notice ankles, knees, hips, shoulders, elbows, wrists. Notice those joints. Do you need to move in some direction so that it feels like those joints are more in a neutral placement? So it's not what it lo looks like, it's more what it feels like. Can you shift your body around exploring, well, maybe this feels a little better. This feels a little better. And again, since the joints are constantly in flux, that neutral placement will be different every day. What a wonderful, wonderful exploration we have to look forward to each time we practice. Okay. <clears throat> So now we're gonna come into a little twisting movement in the body. This is called counter swing. So in this movement, I think one of the most important aspects of it is to watch out for the knees. So a lot of times people will twist and they'll leave their feet pointed forward and then the knees tend to take all the twist. So what I want you to do is keep your knees kind of soft and bouncy so that the knees are always going in the direction that the toes are facing and the twist is really more from the waist, okay? So in counter swing, you start with the arms open, palms down, but then it's as if you've got like a, <laughs> I don't know if you played with mud when you were a kid, but when you're making mud pies, you know, you get a big glob of mud in your hands. And, or if, you were, if you're a potter, you know, you get your clay in your hand and then you're just going to, so you'll inhale and then you'll exhale and you'll toss that mud both behind you and in front of you. Right, so it's going, it's actually going off to the side, but the hand that's behind you is tossing and the hand that's in front of you is tossing. Okay, and then you come back to center and you toss and the knees are bouncing. It's inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. It's a little bit faster than your regular inhale and exhale. And you could even add a bit of force 
to the exhale, thinking about all the things you want to get rid of. <laughs> all that weight on your shoulders, maybe. The arms stay very relaxed too. Relax the wrists. It's just playful. Like you're playing with mud. <laughs> Let's do one more to each direction. And then come to center and just notice how that feels. Notice any pulsing, tingling sensation through the arms, through the hands, through the neck, shoulders, spine. Hopefully nothing adverse happening in the knees, right? We wanted to make sure those knees stayed kind of spongy and soft. Now we're going to come into a side bend and this is also going to be dynamic, but a little slower than this last one. So start by opening up the feet wider than your shoulders. You can turn the toe slightly out if you like, whatever feels more secure for you. Again, I like unlocking the knees. That's kind of my thing. And we start again with the arms out to the sides. And then I'm going to turn my right palm to face up. It may appear on the left side of your screen, but this is my right hand. I'm gonna bring that right hand over my right ear and my neck side bends to avoid the hand. Left hand comes down to the thigh and the right arm reaches overhead. Okay, from here, I'm gonna turn my right palm towards the ceiling and then it's as if I'm outside and there's this beautiful sky, maybe a few clouds and I'm just gonna scoop those clouds away sweep them away and come back through center. And then I go to the other side, left palm turns up and swoops over my left ear. And then I take that left hand and I sweep the clouds away. So this is the inhale. And then this is the exhale. Inhale. And exhale. So it's a little slower pace. Inhale and exhale. And it's really about opening up the sides of the body, opening up the sides of the body from the armpit down the rib cage, down past the hips. Make sure you're not folding forward. This is directly to the side. Doesn't have to be a great big side bend. Again, it's the amount that is appropriate for you today. Let's do one more. And then go ahead and release the arms and bring the feet back underneath your hips. Find your Wuji stance, weight in the heels, knees unlocked, pelvis slightly tucked, back of your neck long, elbows relaxed, shoulders relaxed, breathe. And let's bring the hands to the belly now. Feeling your belly expand as you inhale and feeling your belly contract as you exhale. Expand as you inhale, contract as you exhale. Continue to breathe that way. And I want you to visualize your torso beginning at the pelvic floor and ending at the throat. Let's imagine this container, this vessel 
that we're calling the torso. We imagine it is um, constrained on either end by the pelvic floor and by the throat. So it's a little bit like a room that has two doors. And we know what is the most efficient way, let's say to cool down a room is to shut those doors and blast the air conditioning just in that room. Well, we're going to do a similar practice with moving energy, with clearing energy. And it's just going to be focused on the torso. So to close the rooms, close the room off, so to speak, we're going to engage the pelvic floor, a little bit like a Kegel exercise of contracting slightly uh, the muscles you would use to stop the flow of urine. And then at the top, to contract or to close the door of the Jalandhara Bandha or the throat uh, Bandha, we're going to use a uh, placement of the arms and shoulders to create that little restriction. So at this point, I want you to bring your hands to your thighs. Lock your elbows, let your shoulders come up into your ears, and then just hang out there for a moment, right? So this is kind of a, oh, I'm, I'm watching the grass grow position. <laughs> I can stay here all day, yeah? So you may need to play around with this to find what is comfortable for you. Some people I know like their fingers facing inward, some like it outward whatever works for you, okay? So pelvic floor is lifted, and then the shoulders are kind of up, your chin drops down. That's going to create that little restriction at the top of your room. And we're going to practice something called Uriyana Bandha Kriya. So inhale, feel your belly expand. Exhale and contract the belly back towards the spine, pausing at the bottom of the exhale. Just make sure pelvic floor is engaged, chin is slightly tucked. And then you're going to release all of that. Inhale, bring the arms up. Exhale, bring the hands back down onto the thighs. Pause at the bottom. Feel pelvic floor engage, engage the abdomen, chin is dropped. Then you release, inhaling up, exhaling down, all the air out, pause at the bottom. Then you release, and I'm not keeping the pauses very long, you'll notice. Exhale down, pause at the bottom, and then you release. Now, if you are okay to be doing the, the full Uriyana Bandha, which means you do not have a hernia, you do not have um, unmedicated high blood pressure, and you don't have glaucoma or detached retina, because this is going to increase the blood pressure. Also, it'll heat you up a little bit. So if that is true for you, you can do the next part, and I'm gonna show you my belly so that you can see this next part. In this next part, when you come down during that pause, you're going to take a false inhale and the belly will flatten back towards the abdominal organs like this. Then you release it and inhale up. So same as before, Maybe you hold a little longer than before. And we're just gonna do one more of these. And then you'll inhale up, exhale down. 
And let's keep going with the arms. Inhale up. Exhale down. And once more, inhale up. And exhale down. Okay. So that was addressing the energy just in one specific area. Now we're going to address the energy in the rest of the whole body. And this movement is a little bit like if you take a, a fruit tree and you shake it and the dead fruit tends to fall down, right? The fruit that's ready to drop will drop. So what we want to think about is dropping whatever energy memory, thoughts, tension, any of that stuff that we no longer need. We're going to let that go as we drop. And this is called dropping the post. I'm going to show you what my feet are doing. So I stand with my feet fairly close together. They don't have to touch, but again, that may be better for balance for you. And also if you're um, struggling with balance, then you, you can always have your chair nearby. So I'm just going to start by lifting the heels a tiny bit and dropping the heels back down. That's it. Okay. If you are practicing on a really hard surface like concrete, uh, then you want to be very gentle here. If you're on a very soft surface, you could go with a little more force. Now I'm keeping my ankles as relaxed as they can be as I still need them to do their job, but as relaxed as they can be, I'm keeping my knees as relaxed as they can be, and I'm visualized dropping the tension out of my ankles, out of my knees. And then I'm gonna bring my attention up to the hips, making my whole house shake. <laughs> and then I'm gonna bring my attention up to my shoulders, and I'm really letting my shoulders kind of pop up and down. See how my arms are just flailing like ragdoll arms. And then I'm going to see if the whole spine from my hips to my head can gently shake loose. Okay. Now I want you to visualize a ketchup bottle with a little bit of ketchup in it that you really want to get out. What would you do? You would turn it over and you would pat the bottom a few times. So we're going to do that. We're going to get the, the really sticky bits out. We're going to do that by inhaling the arms out and you rise up to the balls of your feet and then exhale, pound down from the top of the head, down, 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 down. We're just letting all that gunk drop down. And we'll do it again. Inhale. Exhale, down, 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 down. Each joint is releasing something. And then one more time. Exhale, down, 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 down. And then pause. And just notice how that feels. If your ketchup bottle is clean, you could skip on to the next one. Let's try it one more time though, just in case your ketchup bottle isn't clean. So we start off just with the, the little taps, kind of making sure that the joints from the ankle to the knee, to the hips, shoulders, arms, spine are all kind of loose and easily transmitting the force of this tap. And then when we're ready, lift up, inhale, exhale, tap down from the head, boom, 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 let go of whatever you don't need. Try it again, inhale up, exhale down, boom, 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 boom. And one more time. Boom, 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 boom. And then just pause. Whew and feel what that's like. So now I'm really hoping that your ketchup bottle is empty. <laughs> Things are cleared up in other words. For this next pose, I want you to grab your chair. You may or may not use it, 
but um, I think it's nice just to have it handy just in case. And you're gonna step your feet wide apart, facing your chair, you're gonna step your feet wide apart, wider than your shoulders. And this time I want you to turn your toes slightly in. A little bit, we call that pigeon toed sometimes. Yeah. And then start to fold towards your chair. And you might stop halfway or you might start to walk your hands down the chair, maybe even down to the floor. And then walk your fingers forward if you want. That gives you kind of a downward facing dog feel. But really what I'm, I'm looking for for you is this nice release of the backs of the legs because these were the muscles that were engaged in all of that uh, dropping the post business. And then we're gonna slowly climb our way back up. And then once your hands are on the back of the chair, bend your knees, step your feet in. Find your Wu Ji. So feet are shoulder width apart, weight is back in the heels, knees are unlocked, hips slightly tuck, back of your neck long. Just pause and feel. So this is dealing with energy inside, but we also know that our environment plays a role in how our energy circulates through the body. So now I want you to take your hands and see if you can bring them back towards your kidney area. It might more be lower back, depending on what your shoulders will allow you to do. But if it's possible to bring your hands to your kidneys, please do. And I want you to visualize the water in your environment. And you might be living in a very dry environment. So then uh, think about a very uh, place that you might have visited that's very wet, very beautiful blue water. And I want you to visualize bringing that blue color from the environment into the kidney area where your hands are resting. See it first as a mist. And then with each breath, like you're blowing on an ember, with each breath, that blue becomes brighter, stronger, more concentrated. And it starts to fill up the whole area of your back. Then bring your hands over to your right side, your right side of your waist. And I want you to visualize that blue color, that blue mist now shifting to a green, a lush green like the green of a beautiful meadow, grass and trees. And again, each breath brings that green into your body and it grows stronger, brighter, bigger. Okay, and then that green begins to spread over to the left side of the waist. And as it does, it changes to the color gold. And it's the gold of my lamp, the gold that's in my, my carpet here, my rug. So it's kind of a wheat color. And you see that beautiful golden light 
Sometimes you see that in the sunrise or sunset, that beautiful golden light. But not diffuse. Let this be a really strong color. Hmm. And then it spreads upward, up towards the heart. Go ahead and place your hands at the center of your chest. And at this point, it changes to a ruby red color, color of the heart. That mist becomes stronger, clearer, brighter. And then we separate our hands to reflect the lungs. And I want you to visualize that ruby red color now growing a bit more pink and eventually brilliant white, like the color of the clouds and the sky or fresh snow. Hard to think of fresh snow in the middle of summer, but fresh snow maybe in New Zealand. <laughs> Mm. So the whole body is now filled up, nourished from the environment. And we're going to stay with the heart and lungs here. There's some uh, beautiful ways to bring energy specifically to those areas. And one of those is through laughter. So our next practice is a laughter yoga practice. And I'd like us to, um, let's just do a little quick check-in. So just have a, a seat for a moment and notice how you feel. <sighs> Notice how you feel through your body, your breath, your thoughts, your emotions. So just like the joints, all of these other things have a tendency to shift and move and react. So it's good not just to be aware of our range of motion physically, but also our range of emotion and mentally as well and energetically. Okay, so we're going to do a couple of preparatory um, exercises before we go down to the floor for our full on belly laughter. So the first one. Um, I was taught this is called horse breath. Then again, I was taught it to me uh, during kids yoga with my children. And, you know, in kids yoga, we just name it whatever the kids will remember it for. So horse breath, horse pranayama is a relaxing of the lips and you exhale through the lips and you just let them flutter, making a little noise. It does uh, elicit a lot of spit. So <laughs> this is also really good that we're doing over Zoom instead of in person these days. So you've probably done this with your kids, with somebody's kids at some point in your life. So we're just going to do five of these. Inhale through the nose. <laughs> and then you'll just mop up 
And then the next one we're going to do is lion's breath. And in this one, you're going to stick your tongue way, way out. If you'd like, you can even roll your eyes up towards your uh, eyebrows and you can even roar. Now, if you're in a room where there's other people, maybe the roar is a little much. So do what you want to do today. So it's and we're only going to do three of these. OK, so it's inhale through the nose. <laughs> All right, so if you're already giggling, then you're already halfway there. <laughs> so mop up oh that's good good for the face too and then we're going to do a little bit of that uh Uriana Banda kriya practice again but we're going to do it with laughter so we're going to inhale and then exhale ha ha but when you say ha ha what i want you to do is pull your belly back and drag out that last ha and it's a little bit like what we were doing before when we we're standing up, okay? So you're going to inhale. Let's put the hands on the belly. Ha, ha. Two more. Ha, ha. Once more. Ha, ha. <laughs> All right. So we're just warming up those muscles of the belly because the next part is your belly laughter okay you can do this seated upright you can lie down on your back whatever feels best to you uh, but we are going to do a uh, a practiced laughter or a remembered laughter for one minute and what i always like to remind folks is that this isn't a fake laughter. This is a laughter that you recall having at some point in your life, probably when you were with a group of people who you love, who you feel safe with, you know, who just really crack you up. Uh, so you are simply reenacting that moment. And before I do this, I'm going to get my water. It does tend to dry you up little bit. Okay. You're welcome to close your eyes and visualize the last time you had a great big belly laugh with people. And then whenever you're ready, you'll begin that practice laughter. <laughs> that come to a close <laughs> if you can <laughs> and then just take a few moments oh, to to feel the effects of that <laughs> feeling the muscles you engaged that now have a lot of fresh oxygenated blood ah oh. 
feeling the hormones that are now coursing through you. <sighs> feeling your breath rhythm. Ah. Okay. And then take a moment to once again assess how you feel through your body and your breath and your mind and your emotions. Notice if it's any different from the start of your laughter practice to now. And then we'll shift into a relaxation practice. So maybe you're already there. Maybe you're already in a relaxed state, in which case you don't need to go anywhere or do anything. If you'd like to shift to the floor, take a few moments to do that now. So wherever you are, find comfort. Positioning your body in a way that feels good to you. And just feeling your breath come and go. And I'd like you, I'd like to read to you a part of a poem by author John Riddell. Most nights I sneak out of the window in my rib cage and slide down my spine and collapse on my gut's plush leather chair that's always open for me. And I just sit, 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 sit until the sun comes up. Last evening, my gut asked me if I was having a hard time being caught between my heart and my head. I nodded. I said I didn't know if I could live with either of them anymore. My heart is always sad about something that happened yesterday while my head is always worried about something that may happen tomorrow, I lamented. My gut squeezed my hand. In that case, you should go stay with your lungs for a while. I was confused. The look on my face gave it away. If you are exhausted about your heart's obsession with the fixed past, and your mind's focus on the uncertain future. Your lungs are the perfect place for you. There is no yesterday in your lungs. There is no tomorrow there either. There is only now. There is only inhale. There is only exhale. There is only this moment. There is only breath. And in that breath, you can rest while your heart and head work their relationship out. This morning, while my brain was busy reading tea leaves, and while my heart was staring at old photographs, I packed a little bag and walked to the door of my lungs. 
Before I could even knock, she opened the door with a smile. And as a gust of air embraced me, she said, what took you so long? Now take a slightly deeper breath, stretching the body in any direction that feels good to you. <sighs> if you are on your back, take the next few moments to slowly make your way back to a seated position. And let's close by resting our hands at, the, at our metaphorical area of the lungs. So instead of at the heart, at the lungs today, and just feel that breath moving the chest up and down. There is only this breath. Thank you. Peace. Okay, I'll see you next time.